All right, guys, crossover Thursday. First crossover Thursday of the 2023 regular season. Alex Clancy representing Locked On Cardinals on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Of course, I'm David Harris representing Locked On Commanders, and we're here to tell you everything you need to know about this upcoming matchup. Alex, football is all the way back, and my question for you is, are Cardinals fans excited? Because I know there's not a lot of expectation out there in the desert. I'm excited. I think I think yeah. Cardinals fans. So the thing is, David Harrison, excitement has a loose definition. Um, metrics for success now have a loose temporary definition for the Cardinals. So it's kind of like a this malleable thing where it's like we're just going to kind of adjust and kind of see what people are happy about, what they're content with, what the downsides are, what the shortcomings are for a team that's not going to win for many games uh, this year. But mm -hmm. excitement wise, Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury are gone. And now it's just excitement of the unknown. The draft seemed to go pretty well in some very important uh, positions with Paris Johnson, B.J. Ojolari, Garrett Williams, Michael Wilson, who's been the star of camp, the wide receiver out of Stanford. There is excitement because we don't know what the restrictor plate that used to hold this roster will mm -hmm. do when the restrictor plate is no longer here. So it's exciting. It's scary. It's kind of like a it could be scariest environment imaginable, but it could be the beginning of something great for the Cardinals. Now that that said restrictor plate is gone with Steve Kime being gone. Yeah. I mean, it almost sounds like a true like discovery trip, right? Like we're going to go out here into the wilderness yeah. and we don't know what's going to happen at the end of uh, mid January. But what we know is by the time we get to mid January, we're going to know who we are. And and to a certain extent, uh, that's, a, that's a win, right? Cause then you can formulate a strategy moving forward. I don't, I don't hate the approach to the season. I think a lot of teams, a lot of, a lot of hosts who cover teams that are, considered to be towards the bottom of the league uh, could probably probably learn a lot from that approach. I like that. So what is the biggest storyline though, coming from the Arizona Cardinals side of this, as you approach week one, what is the biggest thing that is, is happening uh, around your team? Where are the stars on this roster? And it, it's not like a, Oh, it, that's not a hypothetical question. Like the biggest thing the Cardinals need to do starting on Sunday is find players that will save them high draft capital in 2024. Like if BJ Ojolari balls out, he's a pass rusher, he's in coverage, he's a run stopper, whatever it is, cool, box checked. Paris Johnson Jr., left tackle or right tackle for the foreseeable and then for the future, future left tackle, check. Michael Wilson, bona fide wide receiver 1A, check. Garrett Williams, who probably could have gone in the first round or high second if he didn't get injured last season, if he's a CB1, check. Like that's what starting Sunday is as one chapter with 18 different books in it or 17 different books in it for 2023. Okay. But that's the biggest story is a collection of who is going to make plays for this team because rookies, there is zero pressure to perform win loss record, but there's all the pressure to perform in. You want a spot. Everybody's got an opportunity to get a spot and keep a spot. And it starts on Sunday. So it sounds generic, but it's not player specific. It's right. all 53 specific on Sunday. But that, I mean, but it speaks to the the journey we just talked about, right? The way you just yeah. described before of finding out who these Cardinals are so that you know where to go from there. I mean, and, and it makes total sense. And going up against uh, an Eric Bieniemy offense that's going to be expected to be super creative, going up against arguably one of the better defenses in the NFL, certainly right. expect to be top 10, hoping for top eight, top five, would love best in the league, obviously. I think they would be certainly happy with that billing, uh, but certainly a good, you know, early, whatever, whatever kind of test you want to call it, an early example. Of what kind of talent you have and then uh you know just start the resiliency test mm -hmm. from there and you're going up against on the other side uh the story is not a, a story of discovery it's a story of survival right like this this washington commanders team is in the thick of the wilderness already and really has been thanks to the former owner who is no longer here but the former owner left them in the middle of a mess that now the new ownership group has to come in and try to untangle and everybody who's involved in it is just hoping that they're going to be there when the light at the end of the tunnel is reached and of course talking about ron rivera we're talking about the co the entire coaching staff from Eric Bieniemy, Jack Del Rio, even quarterback Sam Howell, who a lot of people look at and say, if Sam Howell can't pan out or doesn't pan out this year and prove that he can be a, a serviceable or worthwhile quarterback, then next year when this coaching staff is gone, when the general manager uh, you know, in, in name only Martin Mayhew is gone, that most likely the quarterback is going to be gone with them. So as exciting as this new star has been for the Washington Commanders, this week one matchup is also the beginning of a survival story is this unit is this organization going to maintain where it's been so far and that's going to start obviously with sam howell's got to go out there and execute an eric the enemy uh offense alex let me let me ask you this about the washington commanders so that's the biggest story 
But what I'm really curious about is, have you been on the side of this conversation of, I can't believe the commanders are starting a fifth round quarterback, or are you on the side of this conversation of, I can't believe Sam Howell was a fifth round quarterback to begin with? Probably a little bit more of the latter. Um, but when, it, so like, here's the thing, David, it's changed a little bit because quarterbacks are sometimes much more ready to play out of college than they used to be. It used to be, you sit for a year, maybe two, then you play, you hold the clipboard, you learn from a veteran or whatever it may be. Now, like the elixir for potentially quicker success for quarterbacks is a good offensive line, a good defense, and like two position players that you can trust to throw the ball to. Usually it's a tight end and a running back, but you know, with Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel, like it's weird over there with Eric B you have no idea what the hell it's going to look like, but you've got yeah. an average offensive line to a bit above average. You've got one of the best mm -hmm. defensive fronts in football. And you've got guys like Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin and, and Logan and Logan Thomas and a couple running backs where it's like, he can Brock Purdy this. And I know I hate <laughs> that phrase, but it, it's lazy. But like Sam Howell was a yeah. stud. Like it's not his fault. He had two stud running backs in college. Like it, it like he's shown flashes of, oh, right. this translates. This dude could ball out and be an absolute steal. Um, I don't see him as a Sam Howell fifth round quarterback, fifth round pick. I see him as a quarterback who has everything set up for him to succeed, and he just mm -hmm. needs to go do it. I mean, is that fair? Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely fair. That's kind of what we've been talking about here, honestly, in the DMV is, uh, you know, for years now we've been saying about this commander's team, even before the arrival of Jahan Dotson, Brian Robinson, guys like that, that if this team had average or better quarterback play, which is Brock mm -hmm. Purdy, right, then they're a playoff team. And when we said that through Ryan Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, Carson Wentz, and now, once again, everybody around here is saying the same thing. But it looks like we have a quarterback in Sam Howell who actually might give this team average or better quarterback play. So how he does against his Arizona Cardinals defense, obviously going to be one of the key matchups. How whoever the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals is, which I don't know if by the time we're recording this, they've actually officially announced it, uh, is also going to have a very tough matchup against the Washington Commanders defense. But what other key matchups are going to dictate the pace of this game? We will tell you that coming up next on this Crossover Thursday episode of Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Commanders. Where do you find it? And we're going to do that thanks to our friends and our title sponsors for this Crossover Thursday episode, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than uh, two, two to six players worth of statistical projections and you watch the winnings roll in. Testing my skills on prize picks, this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. If you don't have the skills the way that I do or don't, you can turn $100 into $0 and then wait till the next season to reload and hope that you've learned some lessons this week on prize picks. I'm going Justin Jefferson, less than 100 yards. I said that to Luke Braun of Lockdown Vikings. He laughed, so I'm not very confident in that choice anymore. Uh, and I'm also going Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown with his new uh, offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin, over there bringing that Georgia system with him. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday each Tuesday. Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to give you even more value. And Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this football season. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. All right, guys, back here now to continue this crossover Thursday episode. Locked on Commanders, Locked on Cardinals, talking about week one, Arizona Cardinals visiting the Washington Commanders in a sold-out FedEx field. Alex Clancy, I don't know if sold-out FedEx field was ever a thing I thought would happen unless <laughs> it was sold out by Cowboys fans or Eagles fans coming to see their favorite team play the Commanders, uh, but it's happening. Excitement is all around, and that excitement is going to drop to zero if the Washington Commanders lose to the Arizona Cardinals. So in your eyes, what are the key matchups or the key matchup for the Arizona Cardinals to uh, to get a win out of out of the DMV? The front seven versus the offensive line. 
I mean, that's I think that's the only so the that's the only real matchup the Cardinals can come to the table with and potentially hold their own. And and I don't say that as like a doomsday scenario, but they they neglected the cornerback room this offseason because you can't do everything in one offseason. And all the Washington commanders have are fun, young wide receivers, just fun and not the same kind of wide receiver, all of the different kinds of wide receiver. So that's kind of a fool's errand to say, oh, Terry McLaurin versus Marco Wilson. That's it, It's not something they could bring to the table yet, and that's okay. Um, I think that Paris Johnson Jr., DJ Humphreys, um, you know, uh, Will Hernandez brought back to play on the right side interior. We'll see what this offensive line will be against one of the best front sevens in football. Chase Young in a contract year. Chase, like I said in the offseason, just a little aside, the Cardinals should trade a second and a fourth, a third and a fourth, whatever it is, see what the price tag would be to trade for Chase Young. Because apparently he's fallen out of favor because he hasn't produced like he did his first year before getting injured. But he's still a large, smart, very strong human being who is exemplary in his craft to go with Deron Payne and Montez Sweat and just continue the names. That's the one. If the Cardinals can hold their run, not only will it say a lot about them, but it's going to put so much into question in Washington land, which is just fun because it's not the Cardinals. I Do I see that being a fair fight? Not necessarily, but that's the key mm-hmm. matchup for the Cardinals, especially Paris Johnson Jr., rookie offensive tackle, playing against Montez Sweat or Chase Young, depending on where he lines up on the offensive line. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, it's going to be Montez Sweat, and Montez Sweat would love nothing more than to tell Chase Young about how much he's punishing this young Ohio State offensive tackle. Like, yeah, like the enough. game within the game. Montez Sweat and Chase Young, for those who don't know, are basically best friends, if not total best friends. So Montez mm-hmm. would love to give his Ohio State best friend a lot of fun uh, comments about dominating that Ohio State youngster on the other side of the offensive line. Um, but, yeah, that's absolutely – I mean, obviously, you know, it, it, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, I love those guys. And they're the first ones I heard say it. They may not be the originators, but it's really hard to be a bad football team if you're good in the trenches. And for the Washington mm-hmm. Commanders in this matchup, if their defensive line can do damage against Arizona Cardinals' offensive line, like you said, uh, 100%, that's that's going to be one of the keys to the game. Man, you're talking about a very hungry unit. You already mentioned Montez and Chase, but Deron Payne just got paid. He is yeah. looking to show people that just because I got paid does not mean that we're on easy street. No, he's coming out here uh, to win games. I asked him, I want to make sure this is said clearly, I asked him if he's shooting for 15 and a half sacks this year. He said, you know it. That's not Deron Payne predicting 15 and a half sacks. That's me, random media dude, asking him if that's a goal of his and his just smiling and being nice and agreeing with it. So let's just, let's be, be clear here. But the yeah. bottom line is Deron Payne is on a mission to make sure that everybody understands that not only did he earn his paycheck, but he's going to keep earning uh, his paycheck. So that's a huge one. For the Washington commander side of things, I'm looking at first-round rookie, first-round pick cornerback Emmanuel Forbes specifically against Marquise Brown. And look, the commanders aren't going to travel their corners, so a lot of it's going to determine or be based off of how often do the Arizona Cardinals put Marquise Brown up against Emmanuel Forbes, so it's not going to be a snap-in, snap-out basis. And honestly, if I'm the Arizona Cardinals, I'm trying to get Marquise on Kendall Fuller, not because Kendall is a bad corner, but because Kendall doesn't have the wheels that Marquise Brown has, so I know that the commanders have to provide him help, so that automatically takes two defenders out of the picture. Mm -hmm. But when Marquise Brown is on Emmanuel Forbes, I'm curious to see if Joshua Dobbs, Clayton Toon, whoever is a quarterback, is willing to test that matchup. This is a rookie that was brought in from Mississippi State over Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon to a lot of people's dismay. Trust me, the the commander's media room was just as responsive as social media was when that pick came through, and it was not Christian Gonzalez. But when you look at why, it's the takeaways. It's the the record-setting pick sixes, and what the commander's defense was missing last year more than anything was takeaways. They had a lot of stops, forced a lot of field goals, but they did not take the ball away, and that's what they're looking to do with Emmanuel Forbes and, honestly, Quan Martin, their rookie safety uh, defensive back out of Illinois. But how Emmanuel Forbes helps combat a team that has a guy like Marquise Brown is going to directly translate in the division when you got Brandon Cooks, you got Devontae Smith coming down the pike, and I don't know who the New York Giants are going to run out on the field, but somebody. Um, so I'm really interested to see how Emmanuel does this first week. So, so Alex, how do you feel Marquise Brown could potentially do against a rookie corner making his first start. Contract year, another guy, Marquise Brown. Like it's good. <laughs> uh, by all accounts, it's going to be Joshua Dobbs. Ian Rappaport reported that uh, yesterday. Uh, it's loose. Jonathan Gannon's keeping it tight to the vest. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Like I still think it should be Clayton too, but we can talk about that. Like this is solely going to be predicated upon game uh, game scheme for Drew Petsing, new offensive coordinator for the Cardinals. And 
what Drew has been grown accustomed to is lackluster quarterback play when he was in Cleveland. I mean, Jacoby Brissett was fine, obviously, now with the Washington Commanders. He was fine. They won more games than they should have probably with him starting. But it's going to look a lot like the same. I mean, he's going to be – he'll probably get five, seven targets. they got to get creative with him. If Josh Dobbs, he's less than a month into this offense. So even though he, you know, he had the same offense with Drew Petzing in, in Cleveland – how they're going to use Hollywood Brown is, you tell me, like, I don't know. Like, is he a wide receiver? One, are they going to gun him down the sidelines because that's what he's good at? Are they going to move him into the slot and use him sneakily? Like, it, like with Hollywood Brown, he's been such a mystery because we only saw six games of him a year ago with Kyler Murray. So what he's going to do with somebody that's not named Lamar Jackson or, or uh, Kyler Murray – it's it's TBD, but this is where he could earn his money early in the season before Kyler Murray to show his value. So you'll bet your rear end that he's going to find ways to get the ball. How he does it, I have no idea. If it's against a rookie a, a rookie corner, chances are it'll be more beneficial for him. If not, we saw a lot of video where he wasn't getting great separation during joint practices, especially in mm -hmm. Minnesota. So if he falls flat early on this season, it could be walking papers for him. Uh, you know, come next season. So that was yeah. more of a uh, long-winded answer, but I think I answered that plus a no. hundred other questions. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good stuff though. And, and I think, uh, you know what? Look, Marvin Harrison Jr., I mean, Cardinals fans, just hope Marvin Harrison Jr. stays healthy. You know what I mean? Just yeah. he, he went down a little bit in, in Ohio State's first game. Let's let's see less of that. Let's see Marvin Harrison Jr. up on, on his feet because then uh, maybe you can come into Arizona next year. I think that's, that's one of the predominant mock draft, way too early mock draft picks, but I think that's uh, – that's an easy one to make, right? I think next April, if you're in the position, that's that's a pretty easy one to make, whether it's Clayton Toon or someone else. For, for the record, I don't know why you want Clayton Toon over Dobbs, but personally, I think especially if the Cardinals are on a uh, mission to find out who they are for the future, starting Clayton Toon makes more sense for that type of mission than starting Joshua Dobbs. And, and I actually like Clayton Toon uh, a lot coming out in this draft. So on, on the other side of, of everything, obviously, we've got the matchups when we've got the players within some of those matchups, whether it be that offensive line versus defensive line, receivers versus corners. Alex, who is the kind of the, the player for Arizona that you're watching in this game? Zayvon Collins. Moved mm -hmm. to the edge. He will be rushing the pass or something the Cardinals desperately need, and he'll be dropping back in the coverage a little bit as well. Uh, with Isaiah Simmons gone, moved to inside linebacker, now moved to the New York Giants. Coming out of Tulsa, Zayvon Collins wasn't an inside linebacker. He wasn't an off-ball linebacker. They're finally potentially moving him to a spot where he can absolutely thrive and take that year three step in a position they desperately need against a quarterback who started one game in, in his career and one that didn't really matter. This is really a test for the Cardinals pass rush as a whole, hopefully led by Zayvon Collins, that you got a guy who's never played in the NFL before in a meaningful game, go get him. And, and and we'll see if that's yeah. something that they could do. Will it happen? I I don't. I, a lot of my questions, Dave, are going to be I don't know. But that's yeah, you that, know what yeah, I'm looking at the most on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, um, you know I I actually empathize with you. So Cardinals fans likely don't know this, but I also co-host Locked On Bucks on this network, and mm -hmm. a lot of my answers about the Buccaneers on my crossover with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings were I don't know. We're going to find out uh, <laughs> starting in Week One because there's a lot of question marks on that roster. So believe me, I feel it. I think. Weirdly, there might be a little bit more optimism for the future around the Cardinals roster than the Bucks roster, but that's a totally different conversation for a different crossover episode someday. Um, Zayvon Collins is a guy that Alex, I can I can promise you, he is going to his name is going to be dropped to Eric Bieniemy in our coordinator press conference coming up this week because every media member I think in Washington has dropped Zayvon Collins' name uh, yeah. at some point in time. So he's uh, he's definitely a guy that we're obviously keeping an eye on as well. Um, the key player, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So the key player for me is not a guy that's going to be on the field. You actually already kind of touched on it, Jacoby Brissett. Because this Arizona Cardinals team's coming in with a new head coach, new coaching staff, new quarterback, a lot of new pieces, a lot of, like you said, question marks. Well, we've asked Sam Howell, we've asked Ron Rivera if it's difficult to prepare for a team in this circumstance, and they've kind of acknowledged it. But there's also they've also leaned on, as you would expect, going back to where they came from, whether that's Philly's defense, which obviously Washington's very familiar with, or Cleveland's offense. Well, who knows Cleveland's offense that's not in Cleveland anymore better than Jacoby Brissett? Jacoby Brissett, nobody, right? So yeah. I think Jacoby Brissett, we're not going to get to see it necessarily, but I know that I plan on asking after the game because they're not going to tip their hand before the game, but I plan on asking Jacoby specifically or Sam uh, potentially as well how instrumental Jacoby Brissett was in preparing the Washington Commanders for what they hope is going to be their first win 
of the 2023 NFL season. Is that how this game is going to turn out, though? Will the Washington Commanders get their first win or will the Arizona Cardinals get their first upset of the game? We will tell you that coming up next on this crossover episode of Locked On Cardinals, Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we'll do that. Thanks to our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. The Arizona Cardinals know that feeling, except it's not a small business. It's a multi-billion dollar business. <laughs> but you, if you own a small business, want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Once you post your job, add your job and your purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring and then use their simple tools like screening questions that make it easy for you to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked on Cardinals, locked on Commanders here for Crossover Thursday, wrapping up this episode pre-week one. Again, Arizona will be in Washington to face the upstart Washington Commanders. I, I think I don't know if that's the right way to put that, but that could be a way to put it. Uh, Alex, according to our, our good buddies over at FanDuel, the Washington Commanders are a full touchdown and Joey Sly extra point favorites over the Arizona Cardinals. Is there a way, and, and if so, what is it that the Arizona Cardinals uh, – beat that spread and, and beat the commanders. I mean, there's the easy answer is get to Sam Howell. I mean, that's the answer. If you, if you can rumble him in his kitchen and make him make mistakes, the best friend of an inferior cornerback room is a good pass rush. And if they can get to him, force a couple turnovers, they have to win a turnover battle while not turning the ball over. But getting to Sam Howell, strip sacks, interceptions, you know, third and 25s, that's how it's going to happen. They have to get – cut the head off the snake. And because if they're dropping into coverage, they're dead. If they're not getting mm -hmm. to the quarterback, they're dead. They can't stop anybody right now. And, again, I tell Cardinals fans all the time, this is a two-year rebuild. This is not knocking a position group. They went and addressed a lot of the needs. Steve Keim is like the friend you had growing up who would come over, play with your toys, and then leave without helping you clean them up. That's what the Arizona Cardinals organization is now. It's going to take two offseasons. So getting to the quarterback is number one. That's how they can come out on Sunday with a victory and then be opportunistic once getting the ball back after turnover and see what the offense can do. But I think that's really the main way that they can get a dub. Yeah, I love that analogy, man. I love that analogy. That's that's such a spot-on analogy. Um yeah, so I I mean, you know, any given Sunday, right? So you obviously don't go into a matchup. And, and look, we out here, like in the media circles, fans, we can get as, 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 as you know, audacious as we want or as braggatocious as we want. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really impact things as long as the players are keeping an even keel and the coaches are as well. And to a man so far uh, in the commander's locker room and, and coaching staff, they all, none of them are taking the Cardinals for granted. And when you watch mm -hmm. them out there at practice, this is not an off week. This is not an early bye week. This is actually absolutely game week. Uh, for week one of the NFL season. So I don't expect the Washington Commanders to come in sleeping on the Arizona Cardinals at all. And that includes quarterback Sam Howell, who is absolutely, I think, the key to the Arizona Cardinals winning this game is rattling him. The key to the Washington Commanders not losing this game is Sam Howell containing uh, the nerves, containing the pressure, because let's be real, week 18 starting against the Dallas Cowboys when your team is eliminated from the playoffs, yes, there's some pressure. You're a rookie. It's your first NFL start, of course, but that's where the pressure ends. Like once the ball is kicked off, the pressure is now gone. You're just playing football and there's nothing on the line. But now everything is on the line. Again, this is a team out for survival. Their head coach is trying to save his job. Their team president, their quarterback is part of that. Everybody's trying to keep their jobs after this season, and it starts in week one. Sam Howell has shown himself to be a very smart, even-leveled quarterback. Doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. Can throw a bad pass, come back, and, and throw another one on the dart on, on, a, on a line. You mm -hmm. saw that during the preseason. Took a really bad sack that he absolutely owned up to forced a third and 13, came back and hit a third or a 15-yard pass on the very next play uh, to pick up that first down. That is the Sam Howell that the Washington Commanders have to see because this type of a matchup looks like as long as you don't do something to give the Arizona Cardinals life, to give the Arizona Cardinals more underdog energy because that's what they're going to be feeding on is that underdog energy. As long as you don't do anything to feed that gremlin, 
you should be okay and come out with the first week uh, win of the season. And again, that's not shade to the Arizona Cardinals. They're just in a franchise that's in a certain situation, and it just kind of is what it is. Uh, but again, looking for some positives wherever you can find them. Alex, so I think you know my prediction. I've got the Washington Commanders winning this thing, and I'm going to go 24 to 17, even though this Commanders defense will be very upset if they give up 17 points to Joshua Dobbs or Clayton Toon. Um, but yeah. I'm going to go 24 17 just because it's the NFL, and those are NFL players over there, too. Yep. I'm going to say Washington 30 to 13. It's stuck. That's the number that's stuck. I mean, the Cardinals may get a garbage yeah. time touchdown, may get a first drive touchdown. It's week one. Nobody knows, like, nobody has their seed legs yet. Like, nobody, you know, especially yep. like defenses either come out and they stink or they come out and they're the locked in seed and the offense isn't. So, yeah. like, the chance that all 53 players, you know, all 22 starters, whatever it may be, are all in sync in week one for either side is pretty far fetched to think. Um, so yeah, I'm saying 30 to 13. I, I did want to ask you this though. And I, I didn't mm -hmm. tell you that I was going to, but I want to ask you this. Explain to me or explain to Cardinals fans yeah. that just because draft pundits, college football pundits, all of the pundits say that this quarterback is going to be the next great thing for 10 years. One injury away, Robert Griffin, the third number two overall. Kirk Cousins drafted in the same draft, ended up taking over. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell Cardinals fans, I'm sorry to hijack this, but tell Cardinals fans why focusing on this year and not getting infatuated with Caleb Williams or Drake yeah. Mayer, whoever it is down the road, is more beneficial for their fandom than looking towards next year already. I mean... So from from a fan perspective, right? Like like if I understand correctly, like you you always want your team to win. I think you always want your team to be competitive and and you know, you want to you want to have an excuse to to invest in your favorite brands, right? But I've always kind of been of, of the of the mindset Alex and, and the NFL doesn't really operate this way that if we know who we are, be who we are and don't try to fake the funk enough to fool enough people that we end up sacrificing the future of our franchise in the process. I actually look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We talked about two franchises mm -hmm. being in very similar situations. They go out and they get Baker Mayfield. To me, that's a bad move long-term because you're now doomed to be out of reach for Caleb Williams, Drake May, any of these top guys. But it's very likely, right? Not guaranteed, but very likely that Baker Mayfield is also not going to be your long-term future right. either. So this time next year or the year after, if that, you're going to be stuck in a position where you don't have a long-term answer, the most important position on the field, but you also don't have the capital to go get that guy without mortgaging even more of your future that you've already sold off by trying to stay relevant by keeping your head above water. For the Buccaneers, the Glazers absolutely refuse to go back into playoff non-existence. That's right. why Baker Mayfield is there. That's why the Buccaneers are going that route. I disagree with it. The Arizona Cardinals, if 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 going with Joshua Dobbs or going with Clayton Toon is a way of, like you said, finding out who we have and then going from there. If you find out you have an amazing quarterback, fantastic. You're already ahead of the ball game. If you find out you don't, don't go out and, and trade in week eight for I don't even know who. Like, don't go trade for Trey Lance. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> glad that the Dallas Cowboys did that, not the Arizona Cardinals, yeah. uh, even though the Niners probably wouldn't have traded within the division anyway. But I hope that answers the question that you were talking about. Because that's the way that I see things. And, and as a fan, again, do what you talked about. Lean on the positives. Lean on who the guys are for the future. Cheer for those guys. Focus on those guys. And then get ready for next year and hopefully a very good draft class coming in to help bolster that group. Yeah, and for the record, um, I still think Kyler Murray is the best option if he comes back and plays well this year. I still think he is if he yeah. comes back and plays. Look at the Cleveland Browns offense with Kyler Murray over the last couple seasons. It would have been gangbusters yeah. compared to what we saw. And if that's what it's going to be, I'm okay with that and getting potentially five first-round picks with some sort of culmination of no Caleb Williams next year. Until that's not, I still think that is. But I was just curious because, you know, the Washington professional football team, the Redskins at the time, drafted Robert Griffin the third, paid a pretty penny yeah. for it, and it didn't necessarily yeah. work out. Even though he was looked to be the number one overall pick coming out of Baylor, and then Andrew Luck snuck in, you know, whatever. They were they were one mm -hmm. and one A, but it's like nothing's guaranteed for who's being drafted next year. So as you mentioned, right. be fans of what's going on now. Kyler Murray comes back. If he plays great, you may have your quarterback. If he doesn't, we can talk about that later on, John. Yeah, and it's hard not – I mean, it's hard. So I think for some fans, it's hard to understand that 
coaching matters that much. Yeah. Like you could have had a coach so bad that your quarterback struggled to look good consistently. Mm -hmm. And that leads to other problems and, and leads to uh, ultimate meltdowns. But like you said, if Kyler Murray comes back in this system and shows some of those flashes, I mean, truth be told, you're financially tied to him for a couple more years, regardless. So, um, you know, it, it makes sense to roll forward with him. And then uh, what I what I will remind Cardinals fans and any any fan listening to this is every year there's a new franchise quarterback coming on the NFL draft. Like right. it's Caleb Williams this year, but it's going to be someone else next year and the year after maybe Arch Manning. I don't know. Eventually will be that guy. Right. Like there's going to be a quote unquote franchise guy coming out. Uh, pretty much every year in the NFL draft. Sam Howell's class actually might have been one of the first ones that we can remember that didn't. But you know what? Fifth round, fifth round pick, he is now leading an NFL <laughs> franchise. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so make sure you guys come back. Locked on Cardinals, Locked on Commanders. We've got uh, at least one more episode dropping before the kickoff. And then, of course, during the game, follow us both on Twitter at Clancy's Quarter Corner for Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals, and at DHarrison82 for myself of Locked on Commanders. Awesome. Enjoy the game, no matter how you're enjoying it, where you're enjoying it. As always, thank you for making Locked On Cardinals, Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day, every day, every dares for both shows. We appreciate all of you for being the best football fans out there. Thanks so much for making us a part of your day, part of your routine. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind, and we will both see you next time for Locked On Cardinals, Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.